So you're looking to become more consistent on the tennis court. Well, you're in the right place. Today we're talking about ground stroke consistency and how to get it. What is the most important, the four intangibles that you got to have to start having reliable consistency? Step one is your footwork. All right, so I know footwork isn't this super glamorous thing that we love to talk about, but it actually has a lot to do with how well you produce spacing. And spacing has to do with a lot of different things. Sometimes you're on offense and your spacing breaks down because you get too crowded on the ball, or sometimes you're on defense and you're forced to have poor spacing. But it all comes back to footwork. Good footwork leads to good spacing. So the footwork that we're talking about in, in this particular one, the one I want you to focus on the most, starts with how you conceptualize the game. A lot of times we see this as a sinning receiving sport. So as the ball is struck, I wait to receive it. And this waiting breaks down the footwork. Instead, we got to think about going to get the ball. I want to think about going to get the ball. And from there, as I'm off the mark and my feet are, are active, it gives me time to slow down and start thinking about what my space is to the ball. So what I want to think is hurry up and slow down. Right? I want to hurry up, beat the ball to the bounce, go get the ball, and then I want to slow down. All right, this is really, really important. And a lot of times it's all about these chop steps too. If I move out, I want to be there in order to create that space. So now some of you might be thinking, well, how much space do I need, Nate? Ideally, we talk about beach ball spacing, right? Like I should have enough room that if I was to hit the ball with the beach ball, that it would be enough. But sometimes that analogy doesn't land home. What I want you to really think about is making sure that you have enough space between your elbow and hip, and that's gonna give you, most of the time, the proper spacing that you need. So on a forehand, as a ball comes in, if I have this space and I can swing directly out in front, I kind of swing out away and then to the ball, that's why that space is important, then I'm gonna be fine. And same exact thing with the backhand, whether one-hander or two-hander, I really wanna make sure that I have that space to operate from the backswing to the forward swing. So that's the, the big key, footwork and spacing is the numero one for more consistency. And this one is especially true for you students, especially YouTube students that get obsessed with your mechanics, your stroke production. We want to focus on targeting and not mechanics. Let me paint the picture for you. I can't tell you how many times I've had a student or myself, I've definitely have been guilty of this, that as I'm on my backswing, I'm starting to think about anything but what's happening with the ball, where I'm hitting the ball. I'm thinking about my elbow position. Where's my wrist? Is it laid back? tension? We don't have time for that. And in fact, it most of the time ends up causing us to be late or off balance. Paralysis by analysis, it's what we refer to it as. Now, the reason we wanna focus on targeting is that a lot of times in my mind, if I can envision where I want the ball to go, the mechanics start to come together. So in this instance, if I'm hitting the ball down the line, as I'm swinging forward, what I want is my racket to extend out to that target. That's gonna give me a fuller swing and it's gonna ensure that the spacing holds up as well. Send the racket to the target and you're gonna start being more consistent. Step three is all about anticipation and preparation. Proper preparation is a byproduct of good anticipation. All right, I don't know if I could say it again, but, but yeah, a lot, a lot there. But what I'm talking about is that we have to make a decision of where we're hitting the ball and then having a predictive result. So if I hit my ball deep cross court on the forehand side 
I should anticipate it coming back cross court. But what were the words there that made that statement true? I hit deep cross court. It's very difficult for the ball to come down the line. And the more that I know my patterns and I know my habits, I can anticipate what's going to come back and return. So I had a conversation with a student and I realized that the way they anticipate is the same way that they talk. All right, this, this, this may ring a little too true, so I apologize in advance. But a lot of times you can have a conversation with someone and they're not really listening. They're just waiting to speak. They're, already, they're thinking about what they're ready to say. So sometimes the answer isn't even, or the reply isn't relevant to what was being said. Tennis works the same exact way. If I'm over here thinking about what I'm gonna do next and I'm not looking across the court to really get the visual cues of what's happening, then, then what's the point of preparing for something that may not happen? I need to anticipate, see it, confirm. Ooh, their back's turned to me. They're in stress, right? They're, they're under duress. I might get a short ball. Ooh, look, trajectory's really low, ball's coming short. Then I can anticipate and start moving. I've anticipated and I can move forward and be properly prepared. <laughs> So tennis fans, those are the big three things at building consistency. It takes time, don't be hard on yourself, but really put focus, put emphasis on one at a time when you're out practicing and sooner or later, it all comes together and you find that you're super happy with your consistency for the time being until you get to the next level. And then you gotta get even better. No, I'm just kidding. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you really enjoyed today's video. I'll see you next time.